Congratulations, you've made it to our last strum pattern, my favorite, the bluegrass halftime strum. Uh, we're really going to have a lot of fun with this one. At one point we're going to learn how to alter our bass notes, we're going to do some hammer-ons, I'm even going to uh, give you one, a couple little lead-ins. Uh, so this is where your guitar playing, everything that we've worked so hard to get to here, we could even start to make it sound a little uh, fancy or accomplished now. So the strum usually goes fairly fast, as I say it's used in bluegrass a lot, but also folk. And, but because you're going fairly fast, it means that you have plenty of opportunity to fix this strum on the fly. So if you don't get something, you, you'll get it the next time. It, it just happens so fast. So uh, here we go. Let's uh, get at it. Okay, with this uh, strum, your chord changes are going to be coming probably a lot faster. So that's going to mean that you're going to be changing reactively rather than consciously thinking about your changes. So here's the uh, strum. It's about as easy as it comes. It's Hit your root note or bass note and strum down. That's it. So four G's would sound like this. One, two, three, four. Pretty simple. So if we were going to do, we'll just do this in straight G. We'll stay in G so you can get the feel of it. Okay, we're going to go back to one of our old songs uh, called Red River Valley. And you can do it, it's just everything, it's the same with the uh, chord charts. So here we go one, two, three, four. <laughs> can uh, play some of these old songs that uh, you know if you go on YouTube you can find a lot of old rock and roll songs done up with this type of strum they've changed them into bluegrass and this is the strum they're using when they're doing a lot of that worthwhile checking out so let's do another one let's do the circle song rather than using our 4-4 four four, we're using our half time this is also called half time 2-4 okay let's do will the circle be unbroken will the circle be unbroken by and by
Let's try this uh, strum on an old uh, Creedence Clearwater. Have you ever seen the rain? Someone told me long ago There's a calm before the storm So there you have it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to give you an option. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We're going to give you two options actually. So right now we're strumming. That's our entire strum. But what we're going to do a little different here is we're going to pick our root or bass note and when we strum down just like our three-quarter time we're going to cut that timing in half and go so now just staying in the G chord we'll show you the difference this is the original well, now let's go try that with the simplified version I give you play along with it so what you've got is a drive it sounds like a train or something now I'm gonna take this just one step further something I personally do I don't know if many uh, players I'm not hearing them do it out there but when you're in a uh, band setting or you're recording original music like I am when somebody's singing or another instrument is coming, you want to comp or compliment them by staying back out of their way so that their instrument or voice shines through the entirety of the song. So what I do is when I'm doing this strum, I come back and I damp a little bit with my wrist. So it's like this. And what's happening is I get that split second of silence and it allows for all the other instruments, whether it's lead or the singer, to shine through in that split second. Kind of add to the... Sounds more like a train now. So here's our original, then our splitting up, and then with the damping all. Oh, here we go, four of each. And down. So those are all optional, something you can play with. Next, we're going to move on to the exciting world of alternating basses.